Hello, my name is Ed Kodesh. About 38 years ago, as I felt middle age encroaching on me, I wrote a poem called The Middle Ages. Here's the way it went. Middle Ages. His sword wasn't exactly rusty, more unpolished, dull, except the blade and point. An excellent weapon, still the lack of glitter, arguing hard use without time off for cleaning. When it whirred over his head, the sun skittered only at the sharpness, outlined the purpose, the spirit of the thing. Body was just there to hold the edge. In his old age, his arms tired, his will to slash patterns in the air gone. He'll make it gleam, burnish all the steel. I think he'll plate the hilt, engrave his name along the gutter where blood ran. Then maybe he'll die, and then perhaps will rust. Well, I'm still alive. <laughs> And the gleam on my old sword is Tang Dynasty inspired bursts of poetry. Here's a sample of the bursts and I hope my sword is still sharp. Yeah. I was born in 1940, a year of the dragon. This year, I washed the scales, still mossy green, with desalinated water from the Mediterranean Sea, and comb cobwebs from thinning velvety wings. Sharpened teeth on rocks dredged up from sea bottom. Yellowed fangs scraping gray-green stones. A dragon lives as long as who he guards. With sharp fire red, the blue-white core less than it was. He takes up space. A beast who rarely flies, who soared once, shutting out the moon, a glorious cloud. It is hard work, this dragon care. Hmm. I've been reading a lot, I mean, like thousands of pages of Chinese poetry. Well, 500 or so. Uh, a theory of poetry. According to Yuan Mei, the great Qing poet, poets come like water to the pool, welling up and out from perfect silence. That doesn't work or my pool is very dry. So response to Yuan Mei, better Yuan wrote, a living rat than a dead dragon. He was wrong again, not only because dragons do not die, they are immortal, like the cranes in flight bearing their hero riders, but also because no one will write a poem about a rat gnawing on garbage or the human hand sticking out of the armor of the slain, littering the battlefield like empty beer cans after a picnic. Yeah.
but lots and lots along these lines, tall grasses for Wanganji. Sitting with a friend in front of tall, red, plumed grasses, the plumes like our hair turn white, barely wavering in an almost wind. There is no shame for shameful things we've done. A bulbul flies from purple bush to the blue flowering Duranda and sings sweetly, hiding. The noon sun banishes us indoors and far away. When I promise I'm writing at least one of these a day, it can be done in as simple as three lines. Here's a poem called, In Mid-January, Susan Weeds the Garden. I look at the pansies and pentas shining, cleared of the choking winter weeds, and feel myself freer to flower. Or, because after all, I, I did teach. I'm done. One more. One more. Then, okay, we'll deal with the fact that after all, I was a student of American literature. This one is called, So Much Depends on a, Depends on a Red Wheelbarrow. <laughs> My cat jumps into that red wheelbarrow and hisses at the white chickens. I grew up in New Jersey and ate dinner with Dr. Williams's doctor, while a red and yellow parrot who's squawking about the dining room, perching on shoulders, our bodies relaxing to make trees in a jungle. That's what I do lately.